hit incident analysis 2020 she has also got appreciation letter from group captain cbn yadav das directorate of aerospace indian air force for dna barcoding project in 2017 she has also contributed and her specific research areas are the identification of and the predictive markers for HAPE that stands for high altitude pulmonary edema and high altitude acclimatized individuals. She has also contributed in the genetic architecture of HAPE and high altitude acclimatized individuals. Also mitochondrial DNA sequence variation analysis and metabolic alterations in individuals of high altitude pulmonary edema. She is also working in the area of DNA barcoding for identification of bird species and formulation of bird hazard management modules. She is also uh, playing the research on in the area of clinical profile of COVID-19 patients and correlation with the differential immune response. She is also working with the mitochondrial bioenergetics in COVID-19 pathogenesis as well as methods developed for reusability of PPE cover alls. She has uh, on her name more than 40 papers in peer reviewed international journal, journals. She had 4 patents in the field and published. Then she has also guided 3 PhD students. One student has awarded the PhD. She has also trained 30 MSc students. She has research funding from DPAS, Science and Technology DRDO. She is also the committee member of various organizations like Aeronautical Society of India. She is life member of Indian Academy of Biomedical Sciences IABS and life member of Biological Chemist. With this introduction, I would like to invite Dr. Yamini. The stage is yours, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. As ma'am already introduced me, and uh, you have already know about, I mean, DEPAS, what we are working. My group is specifically working on high altitude pulmonary edema. We are identifying the variants which are, which we can be uh, use as a predictive markers. Before going to high altitude, we can uh, identify, predict the uh, uh, prediction of uh, disease. And as well as now already told about DNA barcoding, I'll later, I mean later on, I'll uh, discuss about my DNA barcoding project also. So coming to the today's topic, the multi-omics approaches for high altitude pulmonary edema, biomarkers identification. I'll be covering the multi-omics approaches, how researchers are using the, these multi-omics approaches in the research areas. And uh, uh, we'll also know about high altitude. You have been listening about high altitude since, uh, I mean, yesterday. And uh, we'll know about how the uh, these omics research we are using for the identification of the uh, high altitude pulmonary edema. So now coming to the multi-omics. That involves bringing the multiple omics together that we know genomic, epigenomic, transcriptomic and proteomics to get a clear and more comprehensive picture of uh, what we are uh, getting in terms of outcomes that the biological process, disease pathology and the drug targets as well as biomarkers. So uh, not even multiple omics simultaneously individual omic result also uh, deliver us as an accurate and holistic uh, representative understanding of the uh, biological processes. And uh, these are the types of omics approaches, genomics, epigenomics, transcriptomics, proteomics, metabolomics and microbiomics. So what cover under genomics? That focus may basically mainly identifying genetic variants that are associated with the disease uh, that uh, again responds to the treatments and uh, disease prognosis. So in genomics we cover SNP, single nucleotide polymorphism, SNBs, copy number variation, inversion, in, uh, indels, insertion, deletions, 
these kind of studies we uh, study under the genomics area and uh, these, these are basically allowed us to predict diagnosis and treat diseases in more uh, precise manner and uh, this genomics reveal the genes or mutation that involved in the particular diseases uh, that uh, uh, involved in thousands of different phenotypes and biological process and multiple diseases. Like uh, in under genomics we do uh, whole genome sequence, whole exome sequencing and target sequencing. These sequencing are dependent upon our research areas what exactly uh, we are uh, uh, I mean we want to know about our research. So whole genome sequencing mainly we do for the de novo analysis and whole exome sequencing basically mainly we do with the clinical uh, uh, subjects and uh, because we target on the exonic region and target sequences we are mainly doing this with the for the valid validation of our uh, known gene. And again there are sequencing method we know uh, uh, I mean today's date we do short read sequencing and long read sequencing. Sanger sequencing was the first gen generation sequence. Now comes the long read technology that is known as second generation sequencing and uh, uh, and long read is known as third generation and uh, short read sequencing basically NGS known as a second generation and uh, as you know the platforms mainly dominated by the Illumina platforms and long read sequencing that is a third uh, generation sequencing that is developed by Oxford Nanopore technology. Uh, uh, nanopore uh, platform is using for this long read uh, uh, sequencing and uh, PacBio platform is using for that generation. And the advantage of short read is that is uh, speed scalability that is lower cost and higher accuracy. And long read we do for the de novo genome assembly and full length isoform sequencing. What comes under epigenomics uh, focuses on genome wide characterization of reversible modification of DNA that is epigenomic investigate the modification of DNA. So this epigenetic regulation of DNA can determine cell function epigenome that change based on the environment and uh, as well as change can act as a marker of that is that may be cancer, metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular disease and multiple diseases. And uh, the epigenomic approaches include methylation sequencing, chip sequencing, ATLC sequencing. These are the different approaches for the epigenomic studies. And under transcriptomic, examine the RNA level that uh, basically genome wide both quantitatively and qualitatively we identify these transcripts and uh, qualitatively uh, we identify the transcript that is present and uh, identification of novel uh, splice sites and uh, uh, our specific expression of RNA and quantitatively we, we know the uh, uh, how much expression is uh, uh, present in particular uh, gene. So that may be quantified in terms of fold change. Again RNA sequencing is method of choice for analyzing the transcriptomes of disease state biological process and uh, more than that. And RNA sequencing has broad dynamic range that is a sensitive and accurate measurement of whole changes of gene expressions that can be applied across wide range of species. Then under proteomics use of quantity peptide abundance modification and interaction uh, and again the high throughput analysis of thousand of proteins in cells that comes under, under the proteomics studies. And proteomics is essential for early disease of diagnosis. We do basically for the diagnosis purpose, these proteomics studies. And uh, next is metabolomics that simultaneously quantify the multiple molecules like metabolic function. We do, we study the cellular metabolic function products like amino acid, fatty acids, carbohydrates. And under microbiomics, uh, we do microorganisms of a given community like skin, mucosal surface and gut colonized by microorganism. So uh, in multiomics that we is, uh, know that these are the multiple studies, the combination of the omics studies. So what researchers are doing with these multiomics disease like genomic and transcriptomics, 
can be integrated to prioritize different variant analysis, function of gene, uh, to know the mechanism of disease, to know the exact drug target. We emphasize the more outcome with these multiomics uh, approaches. So like in uh, human molecular genetics, researchers have developed multiomics approach to discover the validate gene in Parkinson disease and what they are getting and the, the, this study highlight the um, multiomics can help fill in the gap, gap in deeper under, understanding of not only the Parkinson disease but other complex, complex trait also. Not only the identification of the marker but what are the exact genes are involved in that uh, uh, I, I mean uh, uh, novelty that can also be measured by the expression of gene. And in epigenomics and transcriptomics that tie gene regulation as well as gene expression that revealing the pattern of helping to complex to know the complex pathways to know the disease mechanism and by studying both these epigenomic genomic and transcriptome uh, we got to know more about the biological process and disease path pathophysiology. Now again genomics and epigenomic transcriptomics uh, this gives us uh, to understand the mechanism of controlling specific phenotype and uh, regulatory element as well as candidate gene therapeutic agent also. There is one study that published in Nature where researchers have constructed these genomics, epigenomics and transcriptomic studies and they have come with the outcome uh, that uh, they have uh, I mean designed a map of the genetic change in chronic lymphotic uh, leukemia that is a cancer that exists in diverse form of a uh, various uh, disease and this map is first of its kind that characterizes the genome, epigenome and transcriptome in chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Other than genomics and proteomics that uh, uh, gives us the effective uh, information about genotype to be linked directly, in the, directly with the phenotype information as well as characterize the again biological process, uh, mechanism involved in particular pathogenesis and uh, development of the therapeutic information. <coughs> then transcriptomic and proteomics that is a uh, again powerful uh, uh, omics information that tie with the discovery in, uh, with the ma markers with the clinical outcomes. And one of the study published in Nature their researchers have used this proteomic and transcriptomic to demonstrate the role of the nucleus play in regulating RNA that turnover of pro-inflammatory gene during infection and that uh, study was investigated in the mechanism of action and elucidating the role of protein nuclein and uh, exo uh, R RRP6 exome complex in this particular process. So these are the multiple type of omics information what how we can uh, use these uh, multiple omics uh, approaches for our uh, research to make it more uh, I mean informative. So now coming to the high altitude as we already know about devices doing uh, I mean uh, uh, we are doing uh, the uh, research uh, with, with the high altitude uh, uh, melodies and our group is working on high altitude pulmonary edema and uh, this information you already got about I mean from uh, Dr. Somnath has already uh, um, tell about these high altitude information high altitude and uh, these are the stress which we are I mean the individual are facing who are going to the high altitude uh, there are extremely low ambient temperature high velocity wind low humidity low barometric pressure partial pressure of oxygen and uh, high intensity solar radiation, there is difficult uh, terrain. What are the physiological adjustment at high altitude? I think uh, Somna sir and uh, Dr. Swati has already covered this area. Uh, what are the high altitude illness uh, or sickness? That is a condition which occurs when uh, you does not get the oxygen at high altitude. And these are the common problem when uh, you, people go to high altitude. And most uh, people are susceptible to altitude illness but it vary uh, individual to individual. It is not like that I am going to high altitude and you are going to high altitude but both will uh, be acclimatized. It is dependent on I mean uh, they, there are multiple variation uh, individual wise. 
so it is not like ki we both will be acclimatized at same time so there are the variation what can be the prevention for high altitude uh, you should maintain hydration maintain nutrition as uh, somna sir has already covered and uh, ascend gradually 2000 feet per day above 8000 feet height and pay attention to past history history of altitude illness if you have got already pulmonary edema ams uh, or haze you sh you should be more attentive if you are going to high altitude consider prophylactic use of diamox maintain a high index of sus uh, sus uh, suspicious for any change in behavior or ability of walk and avoid alcohol or vigorous exercise ams you already know about i just want to add the information a for ams we usually diagnose by the lake louis questionnaires that is a lake louis parameter where we score it 0 to 3 if the score is less than 3 uh, i mean the person got uh, acclimatized if the score is more than 3 then we scoring it as he got the ams so on the basis of 0 to 3 marking we do this lake louis parameter scoring and accordingly we characterize the individual the person is uh, getting acclimatized or uh, ams condition these are the symptoms of ams uh, these already have been covered in previous lectures this haze is again already covered uh, haze high altitude pulmonary edema as uh, we know that uh, going to high altitude because of the high altitude atmosphere the pressure is blood pressure is high the vessel constrict i mean there is a constriction in blood vessels and there is a fluid leakage from the alveoli in lungs so pulmonary uh, fluid accumulation in the lung the hape is the fluid accumulation in the lungs when you are going to the height above 3000 meter the the hape seems to be excessive hypoxia or lack of oxygen due to the lower air and pressure at high altitude and there are multiple factors which involve in the high altitude pulmonary edema that is not only the uh, i mean uh, physiological parameters or gene uh, uh, gender factor there are environmental factor also there are mainly genetic factor also that may be the nucleus factor as well as mitochondrial factor so what are the risk factor rate of ascent prior history of hape if you have physical activity Uh, if you are doing uh, more physical activity you might get affect with the hape because of the activity so uh, in with high altitude pulmonary pulmonary edema we uh, we use the omics approaches to identify the biomarkers as a predictive biomarkers so that we can predict the individual before going to the high altitude so for that we did uh, exome sequencing we did mitochondrial sequencing we did gen uh, genome wide association study from these type of approaches we got to know we uh, i mean uh, we have some of the uh, markers with us that we have to further verify with the large uh, population so first step we have already covered with the small number of the samples there we have done the exome sequencing and we got we identified four variants that are uniquely present with the hape individuals only that is not present in the uh, acclimatized individuals i mean we have compared the two groups one is uh, healthy control that we know uh, like that is acclimatized individual and one is hape individual group and we compare both the uh, sequencing data and there we are getting uh, this type of result that we have significant markers which are uniquely associated with the high altitude pulmonary edema and as well as we have identified adaptation marker also we have done this experiment with the high altitude native population where we we got to know that uh, some of the adaptation marker also and we did the mitochondrial sequencing also from the whole blood and uh, we use the hisec uh, platform for the uh, mitochondrial sequencing these are the bioinformatic pipeline which we have used after getting the raw data information from the mitochondrial sequencing and uh, from there after that and in getting the raw data we are using multiple tools to further narrow down our uh, outcome 
So we use the M toolbox uh, uh, software, Mitomap, CleanWire, OMIMM database. These are the multiple type of database where we have uh, compared our result with this database. And uh, further, we use the computational pathogenicity scoring also for identifying the disease uh, um, variant. So these are the type of uh, uh, pathogenicity markers, SIFT score, Polyphen 2 score, conservation index that gives us, the, us that the mutation, how much conserved this mutation it is. So these are all the computational tools which we used in this mitochondrial analysis. So likewise, we have identified the uh, mtDNA mutation in HAPE susceptible and these are the variants and likewise these are present in which locus, what are the amino acid changes, these are all the, uh, um, these all are the significant mutations, non-synonymous mutations and uh, likewise we scored also that how many this uh, variant is present in how many subjects. So, what is the disease score, what is the pilo 20 score, on the basis of these score we have uh, uh, characterized our mutation uh, uh, on the basis of uh, disease score and pilo uh, 20 So, again these are the score of uh, SIFT prediction and polyphen prediction, here we got to know what are the, which uh, mutation is uh, deleterious, which muta mutation is tolerated accordingly we characterize our uh, these characterize our list of mutations so this outcome we have published in scientific report and uh, there we have like we compared with the hape individuals with agnetized control and we got 154 unique uh, mutation with the hape individuals and there were out of 154 on the basis of using those pathogenic score we have narrowed down some of the mutations and there we got uh, these uh, G4491A, 494A some of the variants that are uniquely associate, associated with the HAPE individuals and one of the study haplogroup is the characterization on the basis of mitochondrial sequencing that this individual is belong to the particular haplogroup. So what we have uh, got to know about this mitochondrial sequencing that HAPE individuals are associated with the M33A2 prime 3 haplogroup. They were uniquely associated with these haplogroup. And again we have done some of the individual, again we have done the mitochondria for the verification of our uh, mutations. So we got to know one more haplogroup that is H2A2A1 that is uh, present with the high number of, with hay population. I mean the, the H2A2 was associated with hay but in, uh, I mean the, the number was high, the association with H2A2A1. And we got to know that we have also done the, um, uh, I mean, we, we have checked the effic uh, efficiency of Oxfos in HAPE also. There we, we did the complex studies, complex 1 ATP analysis and we know that uh, in HAPE individual the expression of complex 1 and ATP what was reduced. And uh, we conclude that reduced complex 1 activity and ATP that result in reduced efficiency of OXFOS in HAPE. And we also uh, done the HIF signaling, OXFOS metabolic pathway, that were uh, the expression we have checked and, uh, and we got to know that the, there was the association with the HAPE individuals. We also performed the MIRNA library for the diagnosis uh, purpose and uh, we did the MIRNA sequencing there we got to know that some of the differential expressed uh, expression of miRNAs that were uniquely associated with the hair and we on the basis of fold change we have characterized those uh, uh, miRNAs and uh, we analyzed that there were 24 known miRNAs that were uh, upregulated with the hair patients and 17 were down, down regulated this study is in continuation and uh, we predict we did the uh, target gene prediction by using the MIR-DB database. 
and again the network network analysis we also did by using the cytoscape software where that we we did the mirna mrna correlation network analysis and again we use the panther for the pathways analysis for the identified the mirnas which are associated with the hair and there were 15 more significant pathways and down regulated uh, and down regulated mrn target that involved 13 significant part pathways so likewise the omics study we used to uh, know the uh, mark biomarkers with the hape association and from this mirna studies we have identified hape associated panel of mirna that could be utilized as potential diagnostic marker for hape as well as the uh, information we are getting from the results uh, this also provide the mechanistic insight of mirna that mediate the uh, hape pathophysiology so uh, by doing the multiple omics uh, approaches for the hape individual we have identified hape susceptible marker as well as acclimatized marker as well as adaptation markers these are the variants which involve uh, these genes and these pathways and we have uh, identified the prominent markers for hape susceptibility as well as high altitude acclimatization as well as, as well as high altitude adaptation so this is my team uh, they are my students colleagues uh, we are i mean this is a picture when we are going to the high altitude as well as other location for the subject collection and all and this was my part with the with my study one one more study what we are doing with the dna barcoding again we are using the uh, genomic uh, tool that is uh, sequencing for the identification DNA barcoding project is where uh, this uh, bird hit is occur. I mean, with the uh, a plane, there is a bird strike, and after bird strike, there is a huge loss uh, of this aircraft. So we, uh, I mean, uh, pa uh, airport station are not able to identify exactly the species. So again, this advanced technology is uh, used to know the. Uh, from the small sample there is a smear there is a small barb there is a small blood sample so we are uh, taking a, that sample and we are doing the dna isolation we are doing the pcr and uh, using this dna barcoding uh, technology and we are sequencing that uh, 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 cytochrome oxidase 1 gene and then analyzing the species which species is, are involved in bird strike so likewise we are Uh, maintaining uh, the i mean what, how many strikes are there in particular station if there are 10 to 20 strikes are there and out of 20 there are uh, 12 to 13 uh, are belong to same species so likewise we are identifying the species of the station and uh, again what are the modules we can use to minimize those species so on that we are also working so first we got to, uh, we we uh, need to know about the particular species that is involved in that bird strike so we are using this advanced uh, this barcoding uh, technology for the identification of species also thank you so much precautionary as such there are not specific precautions to not get hay because i mean for for this reason only that uh, the individual didn't uh, don't get affected with the hay we are doing this kind of research that we can uh, identify uh, the particular person the suscept uh, how what is the susceptibility of that individual person Uh, with the hair so for that only we are doing this research we are identifying the predictive uh, markers no treatment is available no there is no treatment is av available 
for the uh, hep uh, pathogenesis no we can't say if it if the susceptible if the individual is susceptible with the hep will we can't say that the individual won't go to the high altitude but with the management strategy we can send him i mean with the uh, medical information we can send him we can uh, advise them with the with these kind of management you have to go at high altitude this vary with the individual to individual not for all hmm. yes sir yes sir this depend individual to indiv individual i mean for that only for that purpose we are uh, identifying these predictive markers so that that the screening can help to know the individual susceptibility yes Man, we are identifying these types of markers, and we are publishing the results in journals. Can't cover any of these use these results, and you know, take help over it. No, I don't think so. They can't. I mean. this type of research already publishing that i mean individual data is classified that information is with us only but what we are publishing that uh, as dr swati already explained that is i mean that is common uh, that won't get uh, i mean in that won't harm to anyone thank you question please pardon that what we are i mean uh, developing the panel for the identification of hey hey that can be used for traveler also not the for army person that can be used for general public also ha huh. space because thousands in the regular kind of we don't have any information like space yeah in case of space travel
So higher altitude, as well as uh, Antarctic the result, they are both uh, are giving the inputs for the experiment. And it is uh, really helping them. And there is one another phenomena uh, which is very common to high altitude as well as uh, space travel that is neocytonism. What your RPC are found in hypoxic environment, they are described as a new combined. So this phenomena is called a neocytonism. Otherwise, they could survive 120 days. RBC is a life of 120 days. But what happens? What your RBC are found? Describe first, and there is negative emission. And same happens in case of space uh, emissions. When the people are coming by, what your RBC are there? They are described. So new RBC which are coming in on ground, they will only survive. So these type of results they have implication in the space. Thank you, sir. I, yes, sir. I just have a quick question. Yes, sir. I just have one nice question. So, pulmonary edema and the brain edema, these are the two common yes, sir. Uh, yes, pathologies sir. in the higher altitude. Yes, sir. So, those who are suffering with pulmonary edema, they are susceptible for brain edema also, or it is happens otherwise, in the reverse order, which have, comes first. Is pulmonary or the brain? I think we have not uh, seen these kind of uh, individuals that pulmonary come first and haze come later on. I mean whatever the individual are getting either uh, high altitude pulmonary edema or high, high altitude uh, cerebral edema. Yes. Because I am telling, I have just uh, my two mutations you have some. Yes, one is the this one. Yes sir. This one is the disrupted in the scriptive pulmonary It's a very high susceptible gene. Yes sir. Those who have this this one mutation. They are known to develop this schizophrenia in latest stage of life. So that's a very important mutation to observe in your subject. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Another one which you have found is SCAR1, hydroxy power and carboxy acid receptor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that receptor is known as a protocol for it, but this is very important for that as it is a part of the drivability after their decanoic acid, carboxylic acid are produced. That's the lagging of that receptor. And that goes into the brain also. Okay. So these are the two things making me very strikingly different that these people might not be only such a people for the pulmonary edema. Yeah, maybe they maybe it might be such a certain as uh, brain disorders like uh, brain edema or followed by uh, other psychotic like symptoms. Might be possible. We need to check with the Hayes individual might, uh, subjects also. Some of these things and you might be surprised. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. But you have added uh, good information to us, sir, that we can, that maybe, I mean, uh, huh, maybe the, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. We will have our lunch break at 12.30 p.m. at Pratna Hall. Till that, I requested participant uh, who participated in poster presentation uh, competition to be ready with their poster. Sorry,